Hey everybody, I'm Jack, and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Um, Friday, hope everybody's ready for the weekend. Weekend, weekend. We got a pretty day here, but it is about to get very, very cold. And I enjoy the cold for a couple of days, so right now I'm kind of in that anticipation stage of like, oh yeah, it's going to be nice and cold for a couple of days, but this is going to last for at least a week. So probably after three or four days, I'm kind of like, okay, this is getting a little bit old here. <laughs> But anyhow, it's going to be a great weekend going down to Pensacola to work on some new t-shirts this weekend. Just get out of town, chill out a little bit. Need to go out and do something fun. Maybe go see a movie or go see a show or something. Uh, maybe see if there's some music down there. But anyhow, today I wanted to talk about a raw food fruitarian vacation in Costa Rica. How about a jump start? Um, I do videos every day. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button now. Click on the little bell and check send notifications so you will stay subscribed to the channel. Um, just a little background because you never know, somebody could be their first video. Just a little uh, reference point here. I lived in Co I've lived in Costa Rica for 18 years. Uh, the little area that I'm planning on going back to is on the central Pacific coast of Costa Rica. It's called Playa Jaco, but that's with a J, J-A-C-O. Um, now, the reason um, I wanted to talk about this and kind of update this, I did a little video a while back and I was kind of reaching out, fishing a little bit, if you will, to see if people, maybe some people to share a, a house with, some accommodations with. Well, that's too helter-skelter trying to round people up. That's a little more than I want to deal with because then that brings stress into my housing situation. People would, would comment, well, I don't know, maybe I'll come this day, maybe I won't, maybe blah, 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 blah. So I said, you know what, let me just get my accommodations and then I can set up things for other people accordingly uh, for, say, a week or so if they want to come down there. Um, now, what is going to be available down there? Number one, let's see, uh, some things I should get out of the way. Somebody will always ask me if I even mention Costa Rica, how to move to Costa Rica. In comments, I'm not going to type a 500-word five, essay on how to move to Costa Rica. Lots of videos out there. I've actually got a playlist here of uh, Costa Rica videos. You can check out. Either I'll have it up on the screen or you can check it out below. Um, talks a lot about a lot of different things down there and I have one particular video that kind of deals more with people that might be interested in moving or living there. Um, the area that I'm going to, it is a touristy area. Now to update a little bit, I think before or maybe back when I did this video before I was even talking about going in mid-February. Then I kind of pushed it up to mid-March. So now I'm looking around mid-March to the first week of April to get down there. Might be April, the first week of April at, because I want to wait till Easter's over. Because um, once Easter's over, it'll be a little bit easier to find accommodations and the prices will be a little cheaper. Now in this area, what I'm talking about too, I'm going to just kind of try to define some parameters here just so not as to waste anybody's time. Somebody always reaches out and they ain't got no money and they want to go, oh, can I throw a tent down here? No, this isn't the area. This isn't really much of a kind of little hippie throw a tent on the ground, camp out type place. Um, there, there might be a little couple of campgrounds in that town, but it's just not built for that. And it's not a super cheap place. Like so many people have these illusions. They think, uh, I've, I have people all the time, oh, well, I heard, I, I had a friend. Everybody has a friend. Forget the village idiot friend that's been to Costa Rica once or went, gone to whenever, wherever, and they think they're an expert. It's not like super cheap and it's not super expensive. I can find accommodations for people in a, in a, in a range of prices. Um, from modest accommodations on up to fancy stuff. And I got some in, in, the, in the middle of the road places that are probably, you know, once everything's factored in, $70, $80 a night type spots. But, you know, nicer spots on the beach. Um, so, why would you want to do this? Some people might even say, yeah, but I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't live in the tropics or I, this is just going to be a one-week thing or a two-week thing or however long you could afford to come down. Well, the thing is, is I think it's like it, with this lifestyle, you might not return to being able to do it the same exact way as you were able to do it down there for a week. But I think you have to, I think once you feel this lifestyle, once you actually really feel it working, have a connection, which I think a lot of people don't, even though they may have been raw or whatever, once you get to a place where it's so easy to do it and you have abundant, like you have unlimited fruit, 
at your fingertips all the time. You wake up in the morning, I guarantee you we can be at some fresh, if we don't already have it in the house, which we would theoretically, um, you, we can be somewhere with some good fresh fruit in five minutes. I mean, it's everywhere there. So, you know, and what is there to do there? What would you do while you're there? Whatever you want to do. I'm not like a real, let's have an itinerary and let's get up. And in fact, I don't want those people. I'll help you out and I'll send you somewhere, but I can't hang with people that are kind of semi-OCD, need a schedule. Oh, well, no, see, we're going to do this at 7.15 in the morning. Then we're going to do this at 8.00. No, no, no. But I can arrange, you know, whatever type things you're interested in in that particular area. That's a really good place for uh, beginner surfers all the way up to immediate surfers. There's Playa Hermosa that's a little bit um, south of Playa Jaco. So Hermosa's where the big boys surf. That's a heavy beach break wave over there. The um, Jaco. Um, there's a lot of beginner classes there. I've got lots of friends that are surf instructors there that'll give you good quality surf instruction. Um, exercise. There's three gyms in town. There's various, uh, I think there's uh, some BBJ, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu classes going. There's lots of yoga there. That's one of the things I plan on plan getting back to my yoga teachers and practicing a lot while I'm there. So you've got uh, the availability of surfing. You've got yoga. There's a hike at the end of the town. There's a mountain and some of my friends do it almost every day. They either mountain bike or hike up it. Um, where you see wildlife, you see monkeys. Um, one of the last times I went up that mountain, I saw it, me and a friend, we stopped and watched a troop of monkeys just play for 30, 45 minutes. Um, so it's good exercise, you're out in nature, get a lot of good air and uh, some beautiful sights going up that way. Um, what else, what else, what else? I mean, that, you know, what else do you need? That's the warm time of the year. Well, by the time I get there, we will be, get, actually we'll be getting there like if you were to come any time, and I'm going to be there from April to probably July, probably April, May, June, July, getting back to the States around the 1st of August, getting ready for the Woodstock Fruit Festival. But any time between then, now starting around May, June, July, you'll see online and a thousand people will write me, well, I hear it's rainy season. Technically, yeah, you do get into the rainy season, but in that particular area, and you know, the weather can change every year. It's usually a little bit even better because January, February, March tends to be nothing but blue skies, just scalding heat. Everybody thinks, oh, that's great. And then I had people that would come stay with me and they never got out of the house because they were wilting outside. So uh, in my opinion, a little bit better weather because you know, you'll still have good clear days and there are occasional afternoon thunder showers which cool things off. So yeah, you know, just coming down there for a week, 10 days, two weeks, you would get to see how, you would kind of like get to take a vacation from trying to do the raw food life, raw, raw food diet or high food, high raw diet, whatever you're trying to do, because it's everywhere. You're not going, listen, I'm going to be kind of analytic. If you came, theoretically, if you came and you were like having a problem and you were really wanting cook. Oh, I need cooked. I need cooked. I wouldn't know what to do with you. I, I could show you where to go get some good, clean, cooked food. But it just because of the climate, you know, like I say, having all that stuff available around you all the time, plus it being very hot and you're sweating a lot and your body just really doesn't feel like heavy cooked food or cooked food of any sort of heat in food when you're in a place like that. Um, you know, when I lived at the beach, here, yeah, I eat some cooked food. I don't think anything about it because it's just easier. It's uh, I don't get that much here. But when I lived at the beach, I didn't even have, I don't know that I ever cooked in that little house, you know, for years. I'm sure I did a couple of times, but, you know, I'd go for a month, six months, a year, never cook any food in that house just because it was warm and I had fruit around all the time. Imagine, imagine this, and this is not like some best case scenario. This is every week for me. Imagine wherever your accommodations are, having fresh orange juice, fresh sugar cane juice in your refrigerator, having say a stash of 25 um, mangoes, 30 or 40 bananas, six or seven papayas, and as many ripe pineapples as you can eat. We go to the markets and you will find fr as much ripe fresh fruit as you can eat. Now, if anybody wants to get out of the bubble a little bit, um, and we would have to talk about this and make some plans and arrange things, 
Um, we, could, we don't have to stay in Hako the whole time. In fact, I would like to, for everybody that would be interested in coming, at least take one side trip to another market. Either we could go up towards the city where I was living before I left Costa Rica and go to the farmer's market in Alajuela. Or if you were adventurous, we could go a little bit south and get some accommodations down there and go to probably the best farmer's market in Costa Rica. And then the best, biggest farmer's market in Costa Rica. And then also a little side market in an area where you can pretty much eat 100% um, raw and 100% organic. Some of the best of the best food. So anyhow, take advantage. Take advantage. And if you don't, if you don't get to come along this year, you know, like I say, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be sharing, creating content like a madman while I'm down there. I'm already thinking of so many things. You know, I got a friend that uh, does this, that she works on a boat that does a boat tour from Hako to this island. There's some good scenery for me there. I'm going to take some little side trips. We've got volcanoes down there. Basically, whatever you want to see. Oh, and did I, I mention the monkeys, right? Monkeys, um, every day you see these big old iguanas running around town. I grab a few extra bananas and feed them. Um, Scarlet macaws. Scarlet macaws fly over every day. Birds are just like, birds will blow your mind just every day. What you would consider a common bird you see in your yard every day down there. They're just spectacular. So reach out. Let me know. Um, April through July. I'll see what I can do for you. I'll see what we can put together. Um, and it can be a lot of fun. It'll be, uh, I really want to, you know, right now, I, sh I should have mentioned that. I didn't totally, it wasn't totally a bust putting out the video before. I did find one person for, I think for sure is going to spend, uh, uh, share the house with me, share a house or some sort of accommodations with me down there and possibly a second person. So anyhow, come on down, come on down, see it, just come have some fun. It, it, it's going to be more fun than anything. And you got to be sure you can deal with a big kid because like I say, this isn't going to be all serious and a professional tour or whatever. It's just going to be hanging out, eating fruit and playing like we were designed to do with lots of um, real vitamin D, salt water, coconuts, coconuts are a diet, coconuts are everywhere, coconuts are everywhere, we'll buy, we can get, we can buy a whole bulk of them and get you a machete and boom, you got your own fresh coconuts every day, so anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this video, how about sharing this video, because you never know, you know, there's a lot of people out there that might be looking to go on vacation this summer, so I'd have, be happy to have them, you guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow, peace.